Hi, I'm Jamie with Guitarist Magazine, and today we've got a birthday to celebrate, which is Epiphone's 150th anniversary. Now, Epiphone wasn't making guitars for all of that 150 years, but they did start making guitars uh, in the early part of the 20th century um, after making other instruments. And um, at first they were competitors of Gibson, then Gibson's parent company, CMI, acquired uh, Epiphone and they started making their own guitars under the Epiphone brand. And um, led to some very well-known models that uh, we know and love today, uh, like the iconic Casino and the Riviera and the Sheraton. So uh, to honor that anniversary, Epiphone have brought out four really nice anniversary edition um, electrics and we've got uh, them here today to show you. First of which is this uh, really nice Epiphone 150th anniversary Sheraton. So um, just to walk you through uh, some of the basics, the Sheraton's kind of like Epiphone's answer to the 335 kind of, or maybe the 355. It's certainly a bit more upscale. So here's what you get on the 150th anniversary version. It's a Chinese made guitar, um, but it's built to really nice standards. And um, walking through the features, we've got a pair of Gibson mini humbuckers here, which sound really nice and juicy. Very bluesy, very, very kind of classic rock friendly as well. Um, we've got this Tremotone vibrato here, which is a, a sort of bit of vintage Epiphone kit. Um, it works pretty well. Um, it's a bit like a Bigsby in the sort of extent of how much you can get out of it, but some certainly some nice atmospheric wobbles um, and no problem. We've got an Indian laurel fingerboard here, so that's um, that's it's not rosewood or ebony, but it is a is this Indian laurel which is often used as a, a sort of uh, substitute these days, and it's got pearl and abalone block markers here, so there's a touch of um, uh, opulence there. Gold rotomatic Grover rotomatic tuners, and of course this um, iconic tree of life, or some call it the vine inlay here up on the headstock. One thing to note. Um, of late, uh, Epiphone via Gibson have been offering um, Epiphone guitars with this nice, um, what they call open book shape headstock, which is actually an original Epiphone headstock shape that they used in the early part of the 60s. And they went to the longer shape that some people would be more familiar with. But um, something nice about it and quite a little bit more Gibson-esque than some of the Epiphone headstocks that you'll have seen over the years. Overall, this is just a very, very tidy sorted guitar with great playability. And um, uh, with that, it's probably time to move on to the next of our guitars. Okay, so we've leaped back in time a little bit here in terms of reissues. Um, as mentioned before, Epiphone made um, casinos and things like that. They made uh, really nice uh, archtop jazz guitars in the 1940s and, uh, and, and earlier. And this harks back to that era. So this is an Epiphone 150th anniversary Zephyr Deluxe Regent um, archtop guitar. It's um, really nice. Having seen a few original vintage versions of this guitar, I'm, I'm kind of impressed by um, how nicely they've emulated the vibe of the original ones. So you've got these two um, Epiphone New York mini humbuckers here. They're actually um, kind of uh, predated the, the use of the Gibson um, mini humbuckers. So these are these are more kind of from the earlier era of Epiphone and they suit the sort of jazz guitar um, role much better in some ways. So let's hear a little sound or two. So we're playing through a Marshall JTM studio head and we've got a little bit of hair on the, um, uh, in terms of gain on the amp there. So you can hear that straight away, um, they're usable for more than jazz, but also for kind of uh, bluesy, blues jazz, that kind of hinterland between the two styles. Um, a bit more adaptable and versatile than you might think. Um, in line with its uh, roots as a kind of high-end arch top, you've got a five piece laminated maple and mahogany neck. You've got, um, again, the Tree of Life or Vine inlay on the front there. And you've got these uh, really nice mother of pearl cloud kind of inlays here, which would have been on the originals. And it's nicely done uh, here. Although weirdly we spotted that this one is kind of loses out. Uh, as you get up here, you just get a rectangle. So it's kind of the odd man out. Um, 
apart from that, we've got these nice sort of, uh, you know, jazz era looking control knobs and things like that. Uh, uh, and a nice amount of binding in all, in all the right places. And overall, it evokes um, this kind of sumptuous, ornate uh, era of instrument, instrument making very well. And it's very playable as well. So not just for jazz, useful for um, classic blues and more. And with that, let's move on to our solid bodies. <laughs> Okay, so um, as if by magic, I have here in my hand the Epiphone 150th anniversary Wilshire, or Wilshire as they might say, over the other side of the Atlantic. Um, so a little bit of history. When Epi um, Gibson bought Epiphone, or CMI bought Epiphone, they got all of uh, Epiphone's old parts, and so they used those for a bit to make guitars, and then when they ran out of those, they had to come up with their own new designs, and this was one of them, the, the, the Wilshire. Um, very much a, a, a 60s solid body now, so, um, in, in, uh, in keeping with the originals, this has got a mahogany body and it's got a one-piece mahogany neck, which is quite a nice thing to have. Six-a-side uh, headstock there with this sort of bat wing shape, which is quite um, quite cool. And uh, Wilkinson Vintage tuners here on this reissue, so everything stays nicely in tune. A Loctone bridge, uh, which will stay, uh, stay put when you change strings. And um, two Gibson mini humbuckers and uh, CTS pots switchcraft um, switch gear on here. So, um, you know, very reliable, nice pro grade stuff. And I have to say, this is one of the most gu playable guitars that I've played in um, quite a few years, actually. There's something very, very slinky and playable about it. And um, there's quite a wiry tone from those mini humbuckers, just as with a Les Paul Deluxe. It's a slightly sharper voice than full size humbuckers, and actually will be a Goldilocks sort of sound for many players. So, uh, have a little listen. <laughs> You get little pinch harmonics out of them, which is nice. You probably a single call probably wouldn't do that quite so easily. That's the both pickups on at once, and let's go to the bridge on its own. Now it's quite interesting because um, you could almost get a telly like. It's got lots of bite. That it's almost telly like. So. Um, I think this is a really versatile guitar. Apart from being super playable, it's um, it actually sounds great, and it's got some some really nice Fender meets Gibson tones in it. Um, let's just uh, yeah, so it's just a nice kind of um, very usable tone there. We've got it on a sort of crunchy tone here, but it cleans up nicely and, um, you know, probably not sort of guitar used for high gain playing, but uh, we, we really like these Gibson Mini Humbuckers here. So let's move on to the next one. Okay, so um, we've moved along to a similar but slightly different uh, guitar, which is the Epiphone 150th anniversary Crestwood Custom. So it's a little bit like the Wilshire or Wilshire, uh, except this one's got the Tremotone vibrato on it. Two Gibson mini humbuckers as per the last one. Uh, this interesting control layout with a volume and tone for each pickup either side of the jack input, which is a little bit quirky. Um, Indian Laurel fingerboard, Wilkinson vintage style six aside uh, tuners on a six aside headstock. And um, as it's so similar to the last one we tried in some ways, um, we've just cleaned the amp up a bit so you can hear how this style of guitar cleans up. So I'll uh, play a little bit and use the vibrato. <laughs> Thank you. 
So as you can maybe hear, there is something telly-like about this. Um, uh, and again, I just think it's a very useful midpoint between the warmth of humbuckers, the full-size humbuckers, and uh, slight, something slightly more uh, single coil like. And again, the vibrato, it's not a Floyd Rose, but it's just enough to give those evocative kind of shimmers and wobbles. Um, very, very useful. Um, 22 fret neck, Indian laurel, Indian laurel fingerboard, as previously mentioned. Um, same one piece uh, mahogany neck and mahogany body for this. And um, yeah, you can get this nice little Indian laurel kind of plaque here on, on the vibrato just to give it a bit of 60s cool. And um, yeah, then that rounds out a really thoughtful and interesting range. Um, one quick thing to mention about these two solid bodies. They've got authentic 60s style um, colors on them. So this is um, California coral, which is a kind of hot orange color. And um, uh, the, the Wilshire has a, a Pacific blue metallic color, which is uh, kind of like a bit like Pelham blue, a similar sort of vibe, but maybe a bit lighter. So a very handsome and uh, nice looking, incredibly easy playing range of guitars um, from Epiphone. Yeah, so price wise, uh, it's £899 uh, for the Wilshire. It goes up to £1,049 uh, for this because you've got the extra appointments on it, including the tremor tone. And it's 1429 for both the um, Zephyr Deluxe Regent and for the that gorgeous Sheraton there in all of its uh, gold hardware and other finery. So um, reasonably priced as semis go and uh, for a special limited edition um, instruments, then uh, uh, I think these are a really good buy. Very certainly have a extremely usable range of tones as well as those evocative um, vintage looks. So I um, urge you to go out and try them. And uh, if you've never tried any of these instruments before, now's your chance.